Yo, what's up, guys? In this video, uh, first I want to say this is suggested by the user on screen. I don't remember their name, so I'm going to show it on screen right now. I put out a post asking you guys what tutorials you would like to see, and I thought this one was really clever. It could be useful for a lot of things, and I figured it's pretty simple, so I'll just make a quick tutorial on that. Uh, yeah, let's get started. So, what are we talking about? So, we're talking about a keypad. So, I have an NPC here, and if I open this guy up, you can see we have a little custom menu here. And what I did to create this was I basically took the skulls from, I'll show you in a second, I also took some items here and named them specific stuff. So I'll show you that actually right now real quick. For the skulls, I went to skull packs and used the rainbow font pack, took some of these numbers. And then I, I went to systems, I went to custom menus, made a menu called keypad. I have it on the size five. You can do whatever you want though. And then here I put in the items. So just to show you the specific names for stuff, here we're using a stat called keypad input. We only use one stat for this tutorial. It's called keypad input. I just called it all lowercase. I made the name of this item keypad input. So the placeholder would show on the on the uh, what do you, the GUI. Couldn't think of the word for some reason. Um, we have a button for backspace. We have a button for clear. And we have a button for accept. And accept also tells you that you can submit the input keypad input. And basically, that's pretty much it with the GUI. And what happens if we click on it? Well, we can right click on the NPC to open the menu. You can see it doesn't say the placeholder, it says our number. And because we haven't done anything yet, it's zero. So let's enter in a code. We'll enter in five, and you can see now it's five. We hover over accept, it says submit the input five. We could also backspace to bring back to zero, or we could have also cleared. Under a code, let's do four, five, six, nine. And as you can see, we have four, five, six, nine. It looks like 4,569. We can backspace to get rid of a letter. We can clear the entire thing. And let's just enter a code now. So let's do 7853. We can see that here and let's accept. Click on this, a sound played because we entered the wrong code. You can see a message in the chat. So let's clear it and we'll type in the right code, which is super secret code. It's one, two, three, four. And now if we accept it, then it'll say you entered the, oh my God, that is so loud. So it said you have entered the correct code. And then from there, you would run whatever code you would want when the player submits the right code. So this is very simple. So what I did was I just went to systems, custom menus, and I went inside the items. So this one doesn't have any actions in it. It's just, it just displays the input. I'll go over backspace in a second. I'll go over clear and accept, but I want to start off with the numbers. So the numbers are the exact same thing with one value changed. And the way we're doing this is what we're doing is we're multiplying our keypad input by 10 and then imp implementing or implementing, increasing by uh, whatever digit we're pressing in the one slot. So let's go into number one and I'll try to explain the code here. First, we have a conditional and this conditional is going to check if the player stat requirement keypad input is greater than 999. Now this means we're trying to enter more than a four digit code. Now you might want more than a four digit code, maybe even less. But for this tutorial, I'm only using uh, four digits. So if it's greater than 999, that means it's over a thousand. What we're gonna do is in the if actions, tell them that you cannot input any more characters and exit, which stops the rest of the code here from running. Now otherwise, which means that they're perfectly fine to enter another input, we go in, we have a change player stat here, and this takes our keypad input and multiplies it by 10. And this is what I was talking about because now we keypad input increase by one. And then the last part is probably one of the most important parts is we display the menu again. If we don't do this, the placeholders won't update. So it looks like nothing really happened. You could also play a sound here, do whatever you want, but this is just the main idea. I'll go into number two and I'll show, show you the only difference here. We multiply it by 10 is instead of adding one, we add two and we do the exact same thing all up to nine, same thing, but increase by nine. So now we'll go into backspace and what backspace does, all it does is divide by 10. And because we're using integer division, it won't give us a decimal or anything. Housing doesn't support that. It also rounds down. So we just, we'll get rid of the three. So now there'll be 12. And clear is also very simple. Oh, I do want to mention, we also should, oh, yeah, it's here. We display the menu again, so it updates. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to want to display the menu for pretty much every action here, including uh, down here. I'll go to clear. So clear. So for clear, all we do is we have a change player stat we just clear, uh, set the keypad input to zero. It's very simple. Oh my God. Um, I do have it send a chat message is, oh my God. And all it says is that you've cleared the code. And then um, I also display the menu to refresh it. And if we go back to accept, this is uh, where we do the fun stuff, I think. So we go inside here, we have a conditional. And what this conditional says is we have a condition 
that basically says if the player stat oh my god what is happening if the player stat keypad input is equal to our code one two three then what we'll do is we'll actually run nothing we won't, won't run anything in the if actions because in the else actions we're going to tell the player that they entered the wrong code we'll play a sound that's just just to make it sound and look good and then we'll exit stopping the rest of the code from running meaning that any of the code here will run when the player gets it right so what i do is i send a message that they got the right code i'll reset the code for them as well as display the menu again and have that very loud ender dragon death sound for some reason and yeah that's it that's very simple that's really nothing else to it obviously you would change whatever there uh to whatever you want to happen maybe you give them an item maybe you give them a key or something maybe you give them a stat that's up to you i think it's a cool system i haven't seen it a lot so maybe you guys can think of some cool stuff with it be a bit more creative than me but yeah that's it thanks for watching